All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, we're gonna get started. Welcome to LA2M. Uh, thanks for uh, braving the ice and the mist and rain out there to be here today. Um, as we kick off, Happy New Year to everybody. Glad to see you guys, um, glad you're here. Um, we have a great, uh, great session today uh, with another phenomenal speaker with a great topic that many of us will probably uh, be working on this year as part of our endeavors. So, real happy that you guys are here. Um, my name is Jim Musial. Uh, I usually kick these meetings off each month for LA2M. This is our eighth year as LA2M, the marketing organization. We're a nonprofit organization uh, that we get together every month and we share marketing ideas. Uh, we help each other grow our businesses. That's, that's the bottom line here. We want to network. Uh, we want to connect with each other. That's why we bring in uh, great subject matter experts on topics that you all will be working on as part of your daily duties. Many of us wear different multiple hats in our jobs uh, and we're always looking for help uh, in, in doing what things we need to do from a marketing standpoint and to grow our businesses. So that's part of the goal of LA2M. Um, we are, we are like I said, a nonprofit. We're all volunteers here uh, that work with the organization. LA2M started eight years ago with some guys getting together uh, over lunch and sharing marketing ideas, and, and this is what it's grown into. Uh, we're here every month, second uh, Wednesday of the month. Uh, we're taking a, we'll take a couple months off in the summertime while everybody's on vacation and enjoying the summer, but we'll be here every other month uh, on the second Wednesday, as I said. So uh, a couple things, if, if this is your first time at LA2M, welcome. Uh, we will be here till one o'clock and we'll get you out the door right at 1 p.m. so that you can get back into your, your day. Um, we will have a speaker who's gonna talk for a little bit and then we'll do some Q&A and then we'll have an opportunity, we'll pass the microphone around and everybody will have the opportunity to introduce themselves. And if you have an ask or a need, uh, we'd love for you to share that. Hopefully somebody else in the room will wanna connect with you and, and either uh, help you with your want or your ask or need. So, um, so make sure you stick around afterwards. We have the room. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, enjoy your lunch, and then uh, and then and then introduce yourself to someone you haven't met before. So we have we have new faces here, and that's great. We have some old faces, which is even better. Um, on the table is an LA2M card. If you enjoy today, please take it with you. Put it on your desk as a reminder, or share with a colleague, or a friend, or a client. Bring a client to LA2M. This is a great way to, uh, to help share some marketing ideas with them. Maybe you're working on a project with a client uh, and the topic would be uh, beneficial that you could help share some of that information and show to them that you are connected to a great organization that can help uh, in, in your different projects and endeavors. So uh, I think it's awesome. As I said, we are a nonprofit. We have volunteers. Roger's here videotaping. We do put the video up on our website. So if you enjoy things in today's topics, you can always go back and visit the, the, the talk on our website as well as previous talks as well. Information about upcoming, upcoming speakers at le2m.org. Uh, Carter Sherline's here uh, from Frog Prince Studios who does our photography each month and puts it up on, our, uh, on the LE2M Facebook page. So we appreciate that. Stacy's in the back. She's our LE2M manager. She's the one who sends out those emails that you get, um, and, and she's the person that's gonna help us run the organization and make sure we have phenomenal speakers each month. So, uh, Derek Marabam is still part of the board. Uh, Derek is here, but he's very busy, so he pops in and out when he can, when he's in town, and is able to help us out here with LA2M because he's one of the founders. So, it, it's, it's a good organization. We wanna to continue to grow the organization. We wanna to continue to have great speakers come in. So hopefully you can continue to share. Uh, and LA2M continues to come and share with your colleagues as well. So um, part of being uh, a nonprofit is, and we all work for free, is we are Bennett, we are very lucky to have some, uh, some sponsorships here. And we have a new annual sponsor for LA2M, Bauer, Dunham & Barr. Uh, Corey Dunham is here. I'm gonna ask him to come up in one second, but they have become an annual sponsor, and so we'll have their information on our website as well as in the emails, uh, and get the opportunity to get up and talk each month and, uh, and tell you a little bit about their company and what they do. Um, and if you're interested in a sponsorship, please see me afterwards. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. But Corey, if you want to come on up, and uh, I'll let you talk for a few minutes and, and share a little bit about your organization. Thank you, Jim. All right, my name is uh, Corey Dunham with Bauer Dunham and Bauer with BDB Digital Marketing, Branding, and Web. And we've been around for over 30 years, and we started off in um, print and graphics, and now we're a, a digital marketing, uh, branding, and web company. So we can integrate all different types of marketing um, and uh, help people with different strategies. 
a lot of our customers tend to come to us when they're frustrated or they're challenged and they feel like they're losing business because their imaging and their messaging hasn't been out there, hasn't been presented consistently in their marketplace. So that's something we can help them to develop a strategy, we can help them implement, and we can help them track the results so they're more focused on what they're doing and uh, it relieves a lot of stress. So um, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Gordon. Bauer, Donovan Barr, um, look it up on the website. Next month, Corey's going to have some interesting literature here so that uh, you can take it with you. Um, but certainly, uh, if you have any any needs or questions for Corey, he'll stick around as well. I'm sure you can uh, give his card and his email or look him up through the through their website. So, so we appreciate uh, your sponsorship. Um, and like I said, if, if any of you are interested, we do monthly sponsorships as well. Uh, maybe you'd like to just sponsor one month. Uh, certainly talk to me about it and be happy to share with you what that's about. Um, I think that's all we have for the housekeeping. Uh, it's, it's, this is the best part of the, the program now is, is our speakers. So uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Doug Lance here from Arbor Moon. Um, many of us, I, I don't know where I would be without all the apps on my phone. Um, I know as all of you probably were, and I'm sure Doug will tell us, if, if we, we use our phones over 100 times a day. We, we open them and look at them. And whether we're going into an app or we're just checking our Facebook pictures for the 900th time a day, um, we use apps all day long, and it's become a fabric of our, of our business and what we're doing. Uh, and probably many of our clients and our, for ourselves, our own company. So um, we're excited to hear Doug talk about lean app development. So I'm not gonna take any more his time. If you can put your hands together, please, and welcome Doug Land. Hello, everybody. Like you said, I'm Doug Lance. I am an entrepreneur, programmer, uh, new puppy owner. This is my puppy, Nymeria. She's a white, golden, uh, white German Shepherd. She's not that size anymore. She's enormous now. She's like 50 plus pounds, a monster. Uh, I'm also a recovering English major. I have an English degree that I, I mean, we all write, but uh, don't really use it anymore. I mostly write code and do business development now. I am an employee over at Arbor Moon Software, where we make mobile apps, uh, iOS and Android specifically, for clients of all sizes, from startups to Fortune 500 companies. Um, a lot of you guys probably have an app that we've worked on on your phone. Um, a very large pizza company that we can't say who, but we made their mobile app um, that you've probably had before. Um, so throughout this presentation, I'm going to relate everything that I'm talking about to my own experience that I had being an entrepreneur in college, um, starting a publishing company, which is called eFiction. This is a company that um, was basically my response to everyone asking me, what are you going to do with your English degree? Because as a kid in college, getting an English degree, you need to have some kind of answer for people. Um, and I don't know if you guys know about the job market for English majors, but it's not too strong. <laughs> Could be a lot stronger. Um, so I started this company in my dorm room. Um, it was just a simple blog. It, I didn't really know what I was doing when I started. I just knew that I had a vision that I wanted to, one, make a living, and two, publish fiction, um, which ended up being short stories and poetry. Uh, so sadly, that company is no longer a thing um, due to Amazon and me having some conflicts. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we'll get into why that happened. Um, so, who here has experience with lean? A few people? Okay, that's good. Um, so this talk is mostly a generic... Hello? <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Hello? Okay. 
time. Maybe you just talk very softly. Hello? There you go. Okay, so this talk is mostly a generic overview of what Lean is and how it applies to developing an app and how to use this methodology to ensure that your app is successful in the long term. Um, and I know that sounds kind of like over the top, like you can't really guarantee success, but if you follow this methodology that we'll get into, it'll become clear why that's so. Uh, so why, before we get into what it is, let's talk about why. So as you can see from this graph, things are accelerating. Technology is changing more and more quickly every day, and a lot of people don't understand that things are accelerating. Um, and it's, to cope with that change, you need to use some kind of framework that helps you understand what the hard data is relating to these changes and how it affects your business. Um, so, you know, you can see smartphones, a couple years everybody had a smartphone. Next year everybody's going to be using blockchain and how many people have heard of blockchain? A couple people? So, it's going to this doesn't work. Blockchain is going to affect your life um, in the next year or two, and most people haven't even heard about it. They don't even know what it is. Um, so the thing after that, um, whether it's like AI or quantum computers or something else, that's going to happen even faster. So if you want to have an app that's successful in the meantime, you need to use some framework that helps you understand the world using data and using verifiable methods. Um, so Lean helps us validate our ideas. Uh, in my day job, I, people come to our office and they tell me their app idea and I tell them how much it's going to cost or what we need to do to build that app. And a lot of times people come to me with ideas and they're just crazy ideas. <laughs> they're impossible. I wish I could give you examples. I don't want to uh, for confidentiality reasons and things. Um, but they're just not good ideas. And everybody um, thinks, everybody that come, nobody that comes to me thinks that their idea is bad. They believe in their idea. And they 100% think that it's a great idea and everyone is going to use it. And, you know, 70% of startups fail, depending on who you ask. Maybe it's more. Um, and these apps are never used and never adopted. And there's a reason why. And that reason is because the person is not validating their idea with any type of system. They're just using their gut and hoping and praying for it. Um, Uh, so, with all the change that's happening in the world, there's even more and more uncertainty in the world. You know, fake news is like a hot topic in the world right now. Nobody trusts anything that anyone says on the internet. Uh, I mean, as well as they shouldn't. Um, there's a lot that is completely wrong on the internet. Um, it feels like we have more information than ever, but nobody is fact-checking it. There's no way to verify anything. It's all confusing, and un it, we need a system to help us understand the world and take all this information and, you know, sieve out all the good stuff. Um, and then using this system helps us quantify how much a business is worth. So we've all heard stories about huge acquisitions of companies for millions of dollars or billions of dollars. And that company has never turned a profit. And it's like, what is it valuing? What is, why, why are they paying so much for this company? And that's because that company has a bunch of data that supports their argument for how much it's worth. So if you could say, we're, uh, we can make this much money by having this many users and we have all this data to support it, you can bet like 50% that it's, we're going to hit that target um, then you can pay based on that those assumptions. And in theory, this system gives us 
a method of valuing your own, your company even before you make a profit. Uh, so now that I've set the hook a little bit about why we want to learn this, let's dig into what it actually is. Uh, lean is basically in the broadest sense a layer on top of the scientific method. You know, it's the one scientific method is the one method that works. Uh, you know, alchemy doesn't work. Uh, shooting from the hip doesn't work. Scientific method works. Um, and then lean is just like a layer of jargon and other things on top of that that helps you communicate with your peers and other people in the workplace um, and effectively achieve the vision that you set out. Um, and lean, lean refers to a stake, not like a tap, like not, not the tower. You know, it's, it's, it's meant to be efficient, um, and that comes from the origin, which is at the Numi factory, which was rated the worst automotive factory in 1980 something. The worst automotive factory because people were drinking on the job and there was no quality control and they're just turning out garbage cars. And um, GM, it was owned by GM at the time, and they said they had to do something about it. So they brought in Toyota, who implemented their, um, their methodologies along with some of GM's methodologies. And by combining those ideas um, between post-industrial American ideas of how to run a factory and Japanese ideas of how to run a factory, they came out with the lean method. Um, and there's a great book called The Toyota Way. Uh, I forget who the author is, but it's an awesome book that goes through the methodology that they actually used at this plant to turn it from what was known as the worst to one of GM's top performers. Um, and now it's fittingly a Tesla factory, which implements the method. Um, okay, so how does it work? How do we do it? starts by establishing your vision like I was speaking about. My vision for my startup was that I wanted to publish fiction. I wanted to make money with short stories and fiction. Um, you know, what do you want to achieve? What problem do you want to fix? Do you want to, you know, fix some societal ill, cure cancer? That might be a little broad, but connect um, with, you know, what problem do you want to fix? Once you establish that vision, you're going to run everything through the build, measure, learn loop. And this is essentially the scientific method. Um, we're going to make a hypothesis, test it, analyze our data, and go through the loop over and over to figure out if our ideas are actually valid, if we're, we can actually, if the app that we're building is actually something that people want or if you know we're chasing uh, for barking up the wrong tree essentially so these in lean we call hypotheses our leap of faith assumptions these are assumptions that have to be true for our project to succeed um, so if we falsify any of our leap of faith assumptions, that means we have to reevaluate our direction in our app. Um, these, they must be falsifiable. If you cannot fail, you can't learn. Um, you know, you, you're basically trying to force yourself to fail because every time that you fail, one of your assumptions fails, that means you're making progress. Um, you want to make sure that these assumptions aren't so risky that um, you're going to blow up your whole project. You know, you want to contain the risk, atomize things so that they're small little pieces, um, and then analyze each one separately. Uh, and to prioritize your assumptions, you want to take the magnitude of the effect of that assumption will have on your project and multiply it by the time to impact. So the highest impact, quickest result. And the two, excuse me, 
the two primary assumptions we want to make. First is our value hypothesis. This is what value the app presents to the user. Um, you know, Facebook allows you to connect with people. YouTube allows you to watch videos. Uh, you know, every app has its value proposition. Uh, my assumption was, and hypothesis for my project was that people would want to read short stories. And it uh, turns out that some people do, but not a whole lot. <laughs> so I pretty much saturated the market with that project. Um, then the second assumption is your growth hypothesis. This is what is going to be your um, engine of growth. What's going to drive the project forward? Uh, I feel like a lot of people in this room are probably pretty good at this side of things. Uh, this is the marketing side of the project. This is sort of like what is your viral factor that's going to drive growth. Uh, it's the secondary, it's second to value, but it's still very important. And in my project, I thought if I paid authors a royalty and published them, that they would help me promote. It worked out sometimes, a whole lot of times it didn't work out. Uh, I wish I would have had this method uh, more in mind at the time. Uh, so once we have our hypotheses set out, now we have to build it. We have to build something to test those hypotheses. And a big misconception about this part of the project is a lot of people think that you need to get straight to building code, straight to building the app with software. And that's not really the case. Um, a lot of your assumptions you can test using, you know, three by five cards with some markers and just see if people, you know, can use the app or see if they derive any value from it. Or you can do things that are kind of old school that aren't digital at all and see if you can collect the same data that you need to validate your ideas. Um, another misconception about minimum viable products is a lot of people think that you only make one. And that's really not the case. You want to make as many as you can within reason. Um, you know, as I said before, optimizing for impact and time and cost. And these the MVPs should be optimized to learn from uh, learn from their operation, not necessarily make profit or money. Um, and we'll get into what metrics to measure in a sec. Uh, okay, so when measuring, we want to do what in lean you call customer development which in just involves getting out of the building this means getting out into the field and actually interacting with customers and showing them your prototypes uh, showing them your three by five card stack with different options uh, showing them your MVP and having them interact with it this doesn't mean necessarily just doing surveys or trying to collect data that way because as I know you guys all know, surveys can be very, very misleading. <laughs> the data is rarely valid, um, but if you're watching somebody f actually interact with your thing, then that's, that's as good as it gets. Um, and for what we want our data to be in the qualifications or requirements, um, we want to use the three A's, which are actionable, accessible, and auditable. And these are the same that we use for science. Um, you know, we want to see a clear cause and effect relationship. You know, correlation does not imply causation. We want to maintain that causation and make sure that what we're doing is having a direct effect on the results. Uh, we want to make sure everyone, all the stakeholders in the project, everyone working on the project can see all of the data and is involved with uh, the reports of the data. And we want to make sure that our data is auditable so that you can verify the methodology of collection 
as well as the actual data. And if we do all these things, we can avoid the dreaded vanity metrics, which <coughs> these are the things that you track that are leading you astray that don't really mean anything. Uh, for example, total hits on your website doesn't mean anything. You could have a billion hits and still make zero dollars. Um, or gross revenue. That's what I, I was in my business um, when I was, you know, 21 through 26. I was tracking total subscribers. Didn't. It's not the best. It's not the worst metric. It's also not the best metric. Um, I should have been tracking the growth of subscribers each month, or how many pages they read, or some type of leading indicator. Um, these are things that predict the future rather than measure what's happened in the past. For example, customer engagement, customer satisfaction, repeat usage, conversion rates. Um, and then you want to measure them in terms of growth month over month or quarter over quarter, depending on the metric. Um, so you want to continually see your growth percentage going up each time. Once we have all of our data, then we analyze it, look for patterns, see if our ideas are validated. And if they are, we're doing good. But if they're not, we have to decide. Uh, well, if they're not, we'll revise our hypotheses, hypotheses and set a time period where, you know, if we go through the cycle three times, four times, five times, then we're going to decide if we're going to pivot or persevere. And this, this is the time where you decide if you're going on the right track or if you need to adjust your strategy. Um, this doesn't mean that you're going to change your vision necessarily. So for example, Netflix used to be a DVD mail delivery service, and then they pivoted to streaming, and you know, everybody watches Netflix now. Um, Facebook pivoted from colleges to everyone. So basically, you just have a meeting with everybody involved. Say, this is our data. This is what we're have been. This is where we're at right now. Um, is it time to pivot? Is it time to stick with it? And there's not really a good way to decide that. There's no, you know, magic. Uh, you know, there's no silver bullet to make that decision, but you can kind of tell when you are looking at the data what you should do. And for me, I, my business failed to pivot and adapt uh, after a long time I was on Amazon selling Kindle subscriptions. It was fully digital. It was great. I had seven magazines. I had an imprint in India. We were doing great. and. Um, Amazon decided to end the program that they were, that I was using and that was like 90% of my revenue. So I had a pivot or persevere moment. But really what I should have done is had that moment a long time ago and pivoted and um, branched out from just Amazon. But live and learn. That's what Lean's all about. Okay, so after we do the whole process, the whole thing, we're going through the loop multiple times, everybody's involved, it's time for us to start evaluating the whole process itself and your business itself and improving the whole system using the system itself. And it's kind of meta, and, but that's... When it gets down to it, that's what the whole system is about. It's about continuously improving not only your product, but the system itself and the business. Um. Hey, Doug, can I ask a quick question? Sure. So in, in this continuous improvement, if you're going through these cycles, is there, a, is there a set measure where you decide that you're going to pivot or persevere? Because somewhere in there, something could happen, correct? Yeah, so the typical advice is every month 
you have a meeting, it's scheduled, it's on the calendar, um, everybody knows when it is, and at that meeting you decide pivot or persevere. That's the whole, only point of the whole meeting. Um, you know, in some industries it's faster, in apps it might be two weeks, but other industries it'll be longer. Uh, and you're just basing that on analytical data, correct? Based on the data. Yeah. I mean, it's tough because there's no, like, way to decide that. There's no, like, mathematical formula where you can say, if my data meets this target, then, you know, unless you set that up for yourself. If you're in the continuous improvement stage and you say, hey, my hypothesis is we're going to set this target, and if we meet that target, we stay on track. And if we don't, then we veer off. Then you're improving your own process and you're iterating, and that's getting at what this whole thing is about. Uh, so, who should build your app? Um, are there any technical coders, app builders? One? So maybe we want to hire this, this gentleman here. <laughs> uh, so you're going to need a technical partner, uh, whether it's a business or a college student or whoever. Um, there's a lot of great companies locally. I work for one, Arby Moon. We do apps. We're always looking for clients and partnerships for people who have clients. Um, and what you want to look for is people that understand Lean, are working in an agile development environment, experience with analytics, um, that understand app analytics deeply, um, and a great track record of successful apps built using this methodology. And if you have any problems, you can let me know. You can hire somebody like me. Yeah. You say um, that you have really bad app ideas that come along, right? So, but before you knew it was a really bad app idea, you did this circle five times? Uh, it depends. To know it's a bad idea? Like it depends. Some of them you can just tell. Like it, you just know from years of experience building apps. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, anybody can be successful at this. It's, if you're iterating properly, your idea might start out bad. The problem comes when the clients come to us and they say, we have this app idea and we want to build it exactly this way and we're not going to deviate from it. So, yes? Do you guys ever use... Um Canvas exercises to kind of get your first discussion loop quickly. Use what? Uh, a lean canvas exercise that sort of stresses. Uh, we don't specifically, but um, there's a b lot of options out there that I've seen. Uh, I tend to just make a spreadsheet and kind of do it uh, freeform. Sure. So. Yeah. So, so you mentioned uh, like MVPs and customer development. Yep. Um, and not having to build a you know full out like app in order to kind of validate whether or not it delivers value. Can you maybe just dive a little more into like a specific example of what that might look like? You mentioned cards, sure. right? Yeah. Like, so this is an awesome idea. You take a three by five stack of three by five cards, your markers or what? I use markers. You can use colored pencils. It doesn't matter. You kind of just draw the app. Mm -hmm. Um, and I color code the buttons and like features and things. So then when you take off one card, you like say I draw like a blue button, um, I'll take it off and then I'll have my <coughs> blue card that has like the things on that page or screen or whatever. Um, and then the person can use that one. And then you kind of lay out your whole app, just you know, roughing it out. Uh, I have three by five cards that have like little dots on them so that you can connect the dots and everything looks proportional, it looks professional and nice. Um, you can even show it to clients and things, but it's just a really quick way to sketch it out um, and give it to somebody and say, "Does this make sense?" But that, but that's mostly from a user experience perspective, right? Like just to make sure that it's clear, right? Yeah. Um, that the usability is clear. I'm, I guess I'm asking about like the composition, <coughs> right? If you're building a game or you're building a messaging or communication app of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, any any kind of tips, tricks, hacks, you know, like things that you've done um, uh, to, you know, for MVP versions of that um, without having to build the, the app completely. 
Yeah, it's tough when you get into more interactive apps right. because you start having to actually build some kind of interaction. Right. Um, I mean, just as a heuristic or more like general thing, like you don't have to necessarily, if you're building a game app, you don't have to necessarily build a digital version when you can just build sort of like a board game version that simulates it and validates some of your ideas. Um, yeah. It's just kind of where it's like if you <coughs> play chess on a chessboard, you don't necessarily have to develop a whole chess app and say, here, do you like to play chess? No, you can tell they like to play chess because you have chess. If that makes sense. Okay. Yes? Um, I spent about 15 years in advertising and 15 years in consumer research and worked with very large brands in advertising for before. Um, and there can was you a just speak up a little bit so we can all hear? Sorry, I'm sorry. we don't have microphone. No worries. I spent about 15 years in advertising and 15 years in research. Um, you know, my primary clients in my last advertising gig was um, Lincoln, you know, for the type of thing, um, for the agency of records. And there was a period of time when apps were just huge. Everyone felt they needed an app. And one thing that we found in our research, I was over analytics and strategy, but one thing that we found is that um, Apps might be appealing, an app could be appealing in initially, but if you're not, if it's not truly fulfilling a need of the consumer, I think um, it fails. Yep. You know, so the features may be really cool, the um, functionality, usability may be cool, but I think one thing that you talked about that would be probably great to hear a little more emphasis on is the value proposition, because it's huge. If you're not continually adding value, to your target user and testing that value out and mm -hmm. and uh, continually moving it forward, we found that that was a big failure. So just having an app, just as a company say, we have an app, you know, people are downloading apps and dropping them constantly. Yeah. So one of the metrics that you talk about is the user rate. How frequently are we seeing users, repeat users is probably a good one too. Yeah. So I'm just throwing out, it'll be interesting for you to talk a little more about that value proposition piece and how you make sure that you're targeting the right, you know, identifying the right value propositions for your audience. Yeah, so along with the analytics package that a company like Arborman would provide, you would see retention rate, uh, the amount of return users, and you can optimize for those. So when I, I might not have been clear um, with the loop, but you could specialize the loop into like really narrow focus where you're just like optimizing for this one metric and you're just like iterating over and over and over. Maybe you only had a small team that just focuses on that. If you're a big company like Ford or LinkedIn, you have the resources to have a team just focus on that. Uh, so I mean, I don't have maybe specific tips or um, things that I could generically apply, but uh, does that get at what you're yeah, it was just sharing, you know, I think that you, you mentioned it, the fact that um, when you said the first thing that you talk about is fake assumption and value proposition, making sure that you've identified the value proposition of your audience. Mm -hmm. um, how do you guys do that at your company? Using analytics to verify that the data is going in the direction we want. Okay. Any other questions that, uh, that Doug made? Answer for you, Shamir. Uh, do you do you guys uh, have? You mentioned blockchain. Do you do uh, DApps, like decentralized DApps? Uh, we have a client that, that like we don't do things ourselves. We have clients. One of our clients is working on it. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to talk okay. more about it, but yeah, <coughs> we're getting into that space more. What yeah. is blockchain? I must be living in the woods. Uh, <laughs> what the it's neighbors. like. Uh, <laughs> it's a decentralized system that allows you to verify like things like transactions, so like a currency on the internet basically. Okay. Um, among other uses. It's like decentralized computing. You mean like from Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a uses blockchain. It's it's the protocol behind Bitcoin. And um, there are a, a wide variety of new use cases for that protocol. 
things that you can do with it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. our, our microphone is now working, but so first of all, let's let's, let's thank Doug for coming in and talking. About it. <laughs> Obviously, we, we are all in a, uh, in a in a society where our apps are you know controlling a lot of what we do for our personal life and our mm -hmm. business. Um, and I think it was it was kind of said very well is a lot of people just want to have an app to have an app, mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily the case all the time. So. Part of it is part of our jobs as, as marketing professionals and business professionals is to help lead our companies and our clients in the right direction there. And that's part of the reason we bring in speakers that we do. We want to be able to share the information that will help us, give us the ammunition, ammunition give us the, the bullets in our belt that will help us guide our clients uh, and the companies we work for in the right direction, whether it's the, it's the right decision to do something or not do something. Sometimes not doing it is the best thing you can do. So, uh, so we thank you for that information and sharing. Uh, that information, obviously, his information up there. So I think if you want to reach out to Doug, certainly uh, he'd be happy to, uh, to to engage in some conversation as well as Arbor Moon. Um, this is where I would say let's pass the microphone, but we don't have a microphone. It has died, so um, uh, apologize for that. Fortunately, we don't have as many people in here, so we can uh, hear each other. What I'd like to do is, is to just go around the room, uh, and we'll start up here in the front. And if we could just, if you could stand up. Introduce yourself, tell us what company you're with, and if you have an ask or need, so that possibly during, uh, afterwards, you can connect with someone that may be able to help you. So, we'll just get around the room you real quickly. like a talking stick, though. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just don't talk into it. All right, so uh, my name is Patrick Harwood. Uh, I work for a company by the name of Otterbase. We are a uh, professional staffing company specifically for IT and engineering. Um, I work on the business development side and more specifically I'm starting to manage our relationships in Ann Arbor. So when I come I'm really just trying to gain additional market knowledge um, to see what a lot of the skill sets are doing uh, within IT um, and then also network with people that uh, could potentially utilize our services. So. Hi, my name is John Blow, and I um, had a career in automotive design and industrial design, product development. This is my first time here. Very nice, thank you. But um, what I'm doing is just starting a consultancy group and just looking to better understand some of the market that's out there. What are the needs of people who are doing startup business, and how does that reflect maybe their needs for product development, product definition, which prototypes more of physical properties than, than apps. As, as such. But I'm very interested to see what people need and what your stories are as you start out and, and do your own, your own business. So, thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, is Shamir. I, um, I am a marketer. Um, I help. Uh, I, I work primarily with with startups and uh, small businesses, and I help them. <coughs> Um, I recently started teaching uh, at U of M. I teach entrepreneurial marketing, um, so that's been a lot of fun. And uh, passionate about uh, blockchain, <laughs> as I mentioned. So I, uh, I'm co-organizer of the Ethereum Meetup. Um, and um, yeah, again, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's one of those meetups that draws developers who are excited about building decentralized applications. Um, no ask for me, just uh, here to keep people. Uh, so nice to meet everyone. Hi, I'm Chris Farnham. Um, it's been a while since I've been to uh, one of these meetups at like 2 m um, and one time I even spoke here um, on information architecture. Um, I've been doing UX related stuff for over 20 years and uh, I have worked with Enlighten here in town, ProQuest, most recently with Blue Cross Blue Shield in Michigan and Detroit and currently I'm looking for work. So if you know of senior um, UX positions, I'm interested to hear about them. And uh, also I'm open to freelance work as well. Um, happy to meet all of you and talk to you too. Hi, I'm Ron Max Rusher. I've recently returned to Ann Arbor two weeks ago after four years in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, work with Doug at Arbor Moon as a mobile strategist. Uh, we help you go mobile, and there are a lot of different ways to do it. It's not just apps, but apps have never been bigger and will continue. And I think the definition of apps is 
changing, so the discussion changes along with it. Um, good to see you all. Nice to be here. And uh, here you go, Jerry. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Jerry Markle. The name of my company is Managing Your Mind Coaching and Seminars. <clears throat> I help you reduce distractions so you can get to do the marketing tasks you want, especially if you're looking at the stuff a hundred times a day. Uh, maybe you want to just organize and become a little bit more productive. Uh, I don't have any asks. Oh, I'm a person who, uh, who wrote a couple books and I wanted to have an app to have an app. So you can download <laughs> Eight Demons, which gives you some tips on how to reduce distractions and increase your productivity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Sorry there isn't a bigger crowd. Normally there would be, but I think the icy roads wet. So I was so excited when the weather changed. I don't know, everybody's going to be in LA doing them. And then it happened with crappy weather. Um, I'm Stacy from Dollar Bill, your local digital print shop. We love to print things fast and cost effective. I welcome everybody here. I plan the speaker, so if you are a speaker or you know of a speaker, I would love to hear from you because it is kind of hard finding speakers all the time. It's a work, it's a job that I have to do. Um, and happy new year, everybody, and I'll see you next month. I'm Nancy Rojas Fairley, and I'm from the Jackson area, and I'm a freelance creative and marketing consultant. And I've had a handful of manufacturers as clients, but I've been coming to this meeting for a couple of years now, and when this um, uh, lecture came up, I was intrigued because my husband and I have a crazy idea for an app. <laughs> but, and I appreciate all that you have done. And and kind of advise us on what to do. Thank you. Thank you. Al, why not talk loud? Let me try it. Go ahead, just be loud. Hi, happy happy New Year, everybody. Uh, my name is Al Pacha. I'm the owner of the company Alpac Inc. We are out based out here in Ann Arbor, and we are a software development, app development company. So if you have any crazy app ideas, Feel free to talk to us. Uh, for our Moon is also a good company, and we, we are here to make your ideas into an app, into software development, whatever that works for you. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Hi, my name is Amanda Mercer. Um, I'm starting a new company called Museum Entertainment. I've developed an entirely new type of uh, audio guide for historic sites and museums that weaves in educational historical information within a uh, fictional narrative. And I'm here because I need an app developed. Hi, my name is Yolanda Portis. The name of my... Yeah, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Yolanda Portis. The name of my um, company is Brand Park Digital Insights and Strategy. Um, we help companies build great strategy for their communication efforts. We have a nine process starting interestingly with vision all the way up through implementation and maintenance. Uh, most importantly though I like to share knowledge um, that comes from like I said being in marketing research for many years and insights and strategy for many years and analytics and, and all of that coming together to help companies move forward. So my goal here is collaboration. I work with a lot of independent freelancers and when I have projects I look forward to pulling everyone together in support of that. So I'm the strategy person and I pull the team together. So um, it's great meeting everyone. Just look forward to networking. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jen Heyman. I'm the marketing director for Zinger and the Service Network. Um, came on my radar and one of my colleagues has spoken here before Brad Hedeman from uh, our mail order company and then Stacy who we work with a lot at Dollar Bill um, kind of brought this onto my radar. I don't have any asks or needs, just looking always for opportunities to learn and network with folks and constantly learn from other people. Hi, uh, Corey Dunham with Bauer Dunham and Buyer, or BDB Digital Marketing, Brand Name Web. And uh, one of the other services we provide that helps get more outreach for our clients is uh, webinar uh, implementation. So if uh, somebody's looking to uh, <coughs> do something a little bit different, 
be able to interact with their, their customers or potential customers. That's something you can help with implement. And of course, uh, we do all the tracking and the metrics for that. I'm Roger Rail. I'm a venture catalyst. I help with a lot of uh, networking groups. I'll try to make ideas work. And I also run this Ann Arbor Video Interest Group. We're into our fifth year, starting our fifth year, right, Carter? Yeah. Um, and that'll be tonight at Carlisle's out on uh, Jackson Road. The website is A2VIG, A2VIG.org. If you're into video in any way or need video or interested in maybe having video done for marketing purposes, um, that'll be tonight. It's always the second Wednesday of most months. So time. hope to see some of you there. I have some cards to What time? Oh, what time? Uh, 6.30 to 8.30. Um, I'm Carter Sherlyon of Frog Print Studios, and I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer, videographer, drone pilot. Um, I do just about everything except for weddings. If you're a runner, you've undoubtedly seen me because I'm a senior photographer of really sports publications, which is Michigan Runner, or if you're a golf fan, you've seen me. Wondered why I got I get to get inside the ropes of uh, uh, the the LPJ tournament here, uh, as well as all the other pro tournaments around Michigan. Uh, and, uh, content for your apps and websites. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. So thank you again. Thank you, Doug, for being here and sharing your information with us. Um, Thank you guys for coming. Again, take one of the other two cards that are on your on your uh, table there. Uh, share with your colleague. We'd love to get the, get all the seats filled next month. Uh, Corey, thank you again for your sponsorship uh, with uh, with Bauer Dunham and Bar. We appreciate that. We will be here again next month, February 14th, second Wednesday of the month. Um, our speaker is going to be, uh, and I'm just going to use what everybody calls him, Q from M Live, Quinton. Uh, I don't want to mess up his last name. Uh, Quinton from M Live will be here uh, speaking. So hope to see everybody again next month. Thank you guys for being here in, uh, in the crappy conditions today, but uh, we look forward to seeing everybody. Everyone go out, have a great day today. Feel free to stick around and network, and, uh, and thanks for being here. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.